a land of the cold where each peak of the mountains is covered by ice caps. At the bottom of the snowy mountains that do not easily permit human footsteps, I encounter the hot face of the earth. Released through the solid ground, the heat of the earth melted the ice caps and sprouted life. A journey to the last primeval forest in Northeast Asia in search of the lost wilderness of the Korean Peninsula. The forest in late autumn. Man and all that live in the forest, all with an urgency of their own, prepare for the mistletoe. Today, we begin a journey to Russia's far east region in search of a pure world where nature and man coexist. Today's journey begins in Vladivostok, Russia. Russia is the country with the largest land area in the world. The region located on the edge of the Maritime Province is known as the Russian Far East region. It's been 18 hours since I left Sokcho Gangwon Province in Korea. I can see the port in the distance. In Russian, Vladivostok means the ruler of the East. During the Cold War, the Pacific Fleet was stationed in the Russian military hub. In recent years, it has been transformed into a special economic zone of Northeast Asia. Among travelers, it is loved for all the European-style buildings. Vladivostok Station is the starting point of the Trans-Siberian Railway. They say this is the most beautiful train station in Russia. I can feel the pride and aspirations of Russia to take over the East. Even the scenery of the street is exotic. I meet a street musician and an infant audience member. Vladivostok is the entrance to the far east region of Russia, and it is Europe that is the closest to the Korean Peninsula. I say goodbye after a brief meeting and head to my first destination, Kamchatka, a land of volcanoes. There are no paved roads in the Kamchatka Peninsula, so we have to go by plane. After three and a half hours on a plane from Vladivostok, I arrive at the capital of Kamchatka Krai, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. Kamchatka, which measures two times the size of the Korean Peninsula, is the world's most dense area of active volcanoes. There is a volcanic cone shaped like Mount Fuji in Japan in the capital city of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. You can say it's a city that is covered by volcanoes, large and small. Vladivostok 
Kamchatka is a land of fire and ice that holds hot lava at the bottom of its snowy mountains. I want to experience this unique combination nature has created. The volcanic activity has become more active in Kamchatka this year. I am told that a volcano erupted a few days before I arrived in Kamchatka. Okay, the in the volcano is uh, still active in Kamchatka, yeah? Yes, the volcano is still active. So even so, two days ago, uh -huh, when volcanoes erupted, and because of the ash in the air, some flights were cancelled and people couldn't fly from Kamchatka and either they couldn't come to Kamchatka, you know? It is my first time in Kamchatka and my guide Vasily says he wants to show me something. An hour away from the capital, it's the Malki hot springs that look up to the Vachkazets volcano. It's not an active volcanic zone, but I'm told there is something special to see. After walking a little bit, I can see steam rising into the cold atmosphere. Just then, something on top of the stream catches my eye. It looks like people, but I can't see clearly. I walk a bit closer. After passing by puddles that trapped the water, I find them. I feel a little bit embarrassed standing before these two with a fur hat on. They tell me they came here to fish. They show me the fish they caught and have already cleaned. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Kamchatka is a region in the world's largest salmon return. During August and September, you can see salmon in every river. Depending on the species, it is said you can see salmon swimming against the current of the river until as late as early winter. When I visited Kamchatka, it had already snowed so I was able to see the snow even though I wasn't on top of the mountain. After climbing a little more, I could see more water vapor rising in the forest with the smell of sulfur. People are relaxing while dipping their bodies in the warm water surrounded by the snowy mountain. Is really a land of the cold? It's the moment when my bias against Kamchatka is broken. I want to soak my body in the water, but Vasily suggests we walk a little further. But Vasily, who was walking before, suddenly stops in his tracks. This looks like bare footprint. Oh, really? A little bit old, yes. Maybe he was here oh. two days ago. Two days ago? Yeah. Two days ago, oh. the bare steps. Oh. Very big size, yeah? Yeah, very big size. Oh. This one. There are two steps here. Two steps? Yeah. Maybe he stood like, like this. this. Eh? Like this, yeah. This is very big. The size of the size is very big. This is two days ago, eh? Yeah, two days ago. Oh. 
Kamchatka is known for the world's largest brown bear population. If it was only two days ago, it could mean that the bear is still nearby. The bear, searching for food before going into hibernation, is probably in a very sensitive state. Just looking at the footprints tells me the bear is pretty big. Seeing the scattered bear footprints makes me think of the mountain differently. It isn't very high, but after climbing the steep mountain, I can see a small streamlet flowing as it emits steam. Even if it's not an active volcanic region, in Kamchatka you can easily see the hot springs and volcanic landscapes. If you go in deeper, you can find the source of the water. The hot spring water is pouring down like a waterfall. Just then, the scenery spreads out before me. I can understand why Vasily recommends this place. It's deep in the woods, but it's simply decorated so people can enjoy the hot springs from up here. You can swim here. Yes, you, you, swim. you can lay down and at the height, da? Base. Oh. Yeah, you can base. If you're planning to visit Kamchatka, it's a good idea to pack a swimsuit even in the winter. I'm feeling mischievous as my tension releases. I'm looking at the landscape of the snowy mountains while sitting in a hot springs. Doesn't it sound refreshing? This is a, one of the best uh, hot springs. Yeah. Yeah. With, with best view. With the best view. Best view, exactly. Yeah. On the top. After sitting in the hot spring, we decide to climb a little more to find the water source. It is going down, so it's natural pumping up. Surprisingly, moss and grass are growing near the water source. The volcano melted the cold ground as it embraced the living organisms. What will the next volcano look like? I'm looking forward to it.
There are about 300 volcanoes in Kamchatka. Among them, about 29 are active. But volcanic activity has increased since the beginning of this year. In the last year, there have been six big eruptions. The eruption of Tolbachik, which took place this past February, still has red lava flowing down from it. Is there a way to get to the active volcano where the hot lava flows? We decide to visit the Volcanology Research Center. Dr. Ashuk has installed a seismometer in the volcanic region in order to observe the volcano and to predict its activity. But I see a rock in the middle of the office floor. Dr. Ashuk brought the lava back himself at the time of the eruption. They say the first people who run toward volcanoes when they erupt are scientists. We have yet to accurately predict the time of volcanic eruptions. We live on Earth, but much of Earth is still unknown to mankind. I'm told there are going to be bigger eruptions in the future. Uh, Kamchatki. Kamchatka is a place where cold snow and hot lava coexist. I make my way to Avachinsky in search of an active volcano. The reason why I chose the Far East region as my destination is because I wanted to listen to the breathing sound of the earth. Avachinsky last erupted in 1991, and since then it has been releasing sulfurous fumes. I meet some merchants at the entrance of the mountain. Uh, she tells me this is milk she milked herself. She hands me a handful of something else. Okay, 
They're small berries shaped like cherries. The sweet and sour taste cheers me up. The entrance is flat. I ride by car for about one third of the way. The birch trees that have settled on the damaged land before anything else greet us. Not long after, the snowy road spreads across the path. I feel like I'm going to get sucked in by its mysterious power. Starting from here, we can no longer go by car. I take the first step on the Avachinsky volcano for the first time. We're so close, I feel like I could touch the scenery of the snowy mountain. However, I'm told it is impossible to see the Avachinsky crater spewing sulfur gas without the help from the weather. I'm told you can make a round trip there and back from the peak in 10 hours during the summer. However, the snow is piled up and the wind is rough. I don't think it's going to be an easy climb. This mountain has a special meaning to the people in Kamchatka. This is the mother mountain that created everything. I'm headed there now. Perhaps this is the fun part of climbing a snowy mountain. I find a mysterious place while climbing up. In other places, the snow comes up to my knees, but much of the snow is melted here. The power of life that melts the snow. I realize how powerful and warm living things are. It's not very steep, but the snow piled up from the blizzard is not easy to walk on. Just then, a cabin appears like an oasis in the desert. This is a base camp for travelers. Oh. Здравствуйте. 
сейчас сколько? 34 градуса. 34? Да, 34 градуса. 지금 여기 실내는 37도입니다. 제가 지금 두꺼 있는 옷을 입고 있어서 그런데 못 벗으려고 그러시네. 지금 바깥에는 체감 온도가 거의 20도인데 온도 차이 50도 가량이 나오고 있습니다. 네, 그렇죠. 그렇죠. 네, 네, 네. 일단 배우자. 네, 네. 러시아는 이렇게 베트루아 자작나무 껍질로 부러집니다. вот это берем, вот так вот ложим, вот так вот и растапливаем. This is the famous Russian печка. Все и загорается. The cabin attaches water buckets to the печка for all weather uses. И закрываем. И вот сюда наливаем воду, вот так вот. И вот льешь, льешь, пока. А потом кранчик вот так вот, видишь, водичка течет. Perhaps Galina feels happy about having guests at the cabin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Октября. Mm -hmm. Да, вот 14 ноября будет месяц. Я уеду, mm -hmm. другой приедет туда. Mm -hmm. Я здесь просто вообще отдыхаю. Это природа, mm -hmm. тишина, mm -hmm. ни машин, ни суеты, ah. никакой, никого. Ни алло, алло, никто не звонит. Ты ah. понимаешь, ничего. Вот я встаю утром, mm -hmm. солнце, вулканы, so, вот это все. Воздух yeah. звенит, ah. просто звенит ah. воздух. Тишина такая. Mm -hmm. Вот это понедельник, вторник, среда, четверг. Mm. А пятницу, субботу, воскресенье начинают mm. туристы приезжать. The blizzard from a few days ago left a lot of snow to be shoveled. Galina told me she had to shovel all the snow. So I follow after her. <laughs> Kamchatka gets a lot of snow, even for Russia. When it snows a lot, it snows on average one meter over ten days. Most of the work at the cabin consists of shoveling snow. This is how a traveler like me can help. We return to the cabin after cleaning the snow. Galina prepares a warm meal for us. After having plenty to eat, I can feel the fatigue of climbing being released. <laughs> Leaving the pleasant meeting behind me, it's time to start climbing again. The wind grows stronger. My guide is accustomed to walking on the snow, but it's not easy for me to walk on the snow where my feet keep falling in. No 
matter how much we walk, we don't gain speed. It's becoming difficult just to keep my eyes open. Perhaps the gods do not want to allow me to climb the mountain. Мы вот находимся между ними, когда шли вот эти процессы, когда образовывались вулканы, вот здесь возникла трещина, и из эту трещину выдавила вот эти вот, вот это называется экструзия. Мы ее называем гора верблюд. По-английски ее называют Camel Rocks. The guide suggests we climb to the Camel Rocks located 1,250 meters above sea level. I feel a little better after feeling disappointed. I'm told I could see the peak of Avachinsky at the Camel Rocks. At last, we climb the Camel Rocks. It seems reachable if we climb a little bit more but this must be the limit I am given today. As I watch the volcano release white smoke atop the snowy mountain, I want to confirm the power and vitality of Earth. However, the mother of mountains seems to be saying, as long as nature does not permit it, there is not much humans can do. Mankind is included in the laws of nature.